In today's conversation, I want to clarify all of the rules that revolve around IRS net operating loss, the deduction rules that you need to know about. So if you are interested in this topic, I want you to stick around till the end. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweaty Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you are to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. <laughs> In today's conversation, I want to speak to you specifically about IRS net operating loss deduction rules. It's very important. Now, before we actually get into the nitty gritty, let me just break it down for you. And it, let me give you an overview of what, the, of what the, those NOL are. The net operating losses. So generally, a net operating loss is an excess of deductions for expenses uh, from the operation of a business over income from the operations of that business. For individuals, an NOL may be attrib attributable to casualty losses. So NOLs arising in tax years beginning in 2018, 2019, and 2020 may be carried back for a period of five years and carry forward indefinitely. So a taxpayer may elect to forego the carryback. Generally, a net operating loss arising in a tax year beginning in 2021 or later may not be carried back and instead must be carried forward indefinitely. However, farming losses arising in tax years beginning in 2021 or later may be carried back two years and carry back, carry forward indefinitely. So you can see that the rules for carrying forward is always indefinite. But the rules for carrying backwards depend on the kind of industry you're in. And it's usually maximum uh, two to three years when we talk about carry backwards. Okay. And uh, what amount is deductible as a net operating loss? This is an important question. Generally, for a tax year beginning in 2018 or later, a net operating loss deduction for any tax year equals the lesser of either the aggregate of the net operating loss carryovers to such year plus the net operating loss carrybacks to search year, or 80% or 100% for NOLs generated in tax years beginning before 2021 of taxable income computed without regard to the allowable NOL deduction. And the, thing, the good thing you have to understand here is that the 80% limitation applies to REIT nulls, so REIT um, NOLs, so net operating losses. So here we are speaking about real estate investment trust but it does not apply to losses on uh, of non-life insurance companies so if you want let's just try to dig a little further because you need to understand net operating losses really clearly so a net operating loss can be carried forward to offset taxable income in future years in order to reduce a company's future tax liability the purpose behind this tax provision is to allow some form of tax relief when a company loses money in a tax period. So the IRS acknowledges that some companies' business profits are cyclical in nature and not in line with the standard tax year. So annual carry forwards are recorded as an asset on the company's general general ledger. I'll speak by that later on. So they offer a benefit to the company in the form of a future tax liability savings. So a deferred tax asset is created for the net operating loss carry forward, which is offset against net income in future years. The deferred tax asset account is drawn down each year not to exceed 80% of net income in any one of the subsequent years until the balance is exhausted. Okay, A farming business, for example, may have significant profits and a large tax payments in one year, then incur an annual for the, in the next, followed by another profitable year. So in order to smooth the tax burden, the loss carry forwards provision allows for the annual to in, to go to the second year to offset taxes due in the third year. Let's talk about the target audience. So when we speak about net operating loss carry forwards and care and, uh, and carry backs, you need to understand the target audience that we really are speaking about. So which taxpayers are allowed to deduct net operating losses? So here are the allowed categories. Individuals, C corporations, 
estates and trusts, exempt organizations with unrelated business taxable income, participants in a common trust fund, insurance companies in general, personal holding companies under certain circumstances. And if you have questions, I mean, we have an entire video talking about the personal holding companies. So if you have questions, you can just drop them below. We'll certainly answer you. But we do have a video that's coming up about the personal holding companies and uh, how they are treated in terms of taxes. Okay, so those are the allowed individuals and companies. What about the, uh, the uh, constituencies that are not allowed to actually deduct net operating losses? So partnerships are not allowed. S corporations are not allowed. Regulated investment companies are not allowed. Corporations subject to the accumulated earning tax are not allowed. And common trust funds are not allowed. So it's very important to, un to understand that. Now, one thing we want to say here is that there is a particular situation when you have a single member LLC or a single member S corporation. Why? If you're a single member LLC, in terms of the law, in terms of the in terms of IRS, you are regarded as a disregarded entity. You are considered a disregarded entity. In other words, you're not a, a you're not quote unquote an actual company, tax wise, from the IRS's point of view. So in that case, even if you are a partnership, you can actually uh, file as an individual because you have elected to file your taxes as an individual. Okay, so this is really important to really understand that. So even though partnerships are not allowed to uh, deduct net operating losses, if you're a single member LLC, you can actually deduct your net operating losses. I just wanted to clarify that because uh, we have we have received questions around that topic. People were wondering if they could still uh, deduct their net operating losses. Yes, yes. So again, remember that we are speaking about carry forwards indefinitely. And when it comes to uh, carry backs, you can only do two or three years back, depending on the depending on your situation. I want to dig a little further because this is a topic that actually uh, we have received gazillions of questions about. So I want to dig a little deeper. So I've already said that a net operating loss is the excess of allowed deductions of a gross income. So each year's NOL may be carried back or carried forward for periods specified by law or until completely offset against income, whichever comes first. Okay, so most taxpayers can claim an NOL deduction, including all the names that I just gave you, individual, C Corp, you know, estate and trust and so on and so forth. So insurance companies also can actually uh, claim an NOL. The only thing is that for losses arising in tax years beginning after 2017, a life insurance company may claim an NOL. For losses arising in tax years beginning before 2018, a life insurance company cannot take an NOL deduction. Instead, it can claim an, a similar operations loss deduction Okay, prior to being stricken by the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. So this is specifically for, for uh, insurance companies. For uh, individuals, estates, and and trust, it is, it's, it's definitely fine. When an individual taxpayer has more than one business, all income and deductions, deductions attributable to the various businesses must be taken into account in computing the NOL, irrespective of the, of the apportionment between the businesses. This is really important. So don't you think about, hey, you know, I have uh, several businesses and I'm just going to take an NOL in one business and not apply the NOL, or the NOL to another business. No. The IRS wants you to take an aggregate view, an aggregate view. Generally, estates and trusts may deduct NOLs in the same manner as other individuals. So the trust or estate also carries the NOL back and forward and determines the amount of taxable income for each intervening year in the, the same manner as other individuals. So a trust and or estate can pass through an, an unused NOL to beneficiaries only in the year the trust or estate terminates with an unused NOL carryover. Very important. However, NOL deductions cannot be passed through the cannot be passed through to beneficiaries for another year. Okay? So for corporations, well corporations generally may deduct NOL, the corporation must recognize its own gains and losses, thus shareholders of a controlled or a wholly owned corporation may not claim the corporation's NOL on their individual uh, returns because uh, th there is a segregation of uh, entities here. A C corporation cannot allocate its NOL to its shareholders 
unless the corporation is a sham they should be disregarded okay a corporation that acts in its own name with respect to property is not a dummy corporation even if its business activity is minimal very important and don't forget the state tax consequences because not all states adopt the federal annual rules so a number of states do not allow the federal annual deductions because uh, a corporation is uh, because a corporation's taxable income is based on federal taxable income let's talk about the calculation so how is net operating loss calculated very important to understand the the calculus that actually regulates the whole thing so an individual's net operating loss is equal to the taxpayers deductions less gross income modify as follows so the annual deduction is disallowed for any annual carryback or carryover from another tax year the deduction of business and non-business capital losses is limited to the amount of capital gains the deduction of non-business deductions is limited to the amount of non-business income the exclusion for capital gains for from small business stock under irc 1202 is not allowed if you have questions about internal revenue code 1202 please drop them below we'll certainly answer you not a problem we have done a lot of research about that so we have all the answers for you the deduction for qualified business income is disallowed so we are speaking here about the uh, the annual calculation for a an individual a corporation's net operating loss is equal to the corporation's deductions less gross income modified as follows the annual deduction is disallowed for an annual carryback or carry over from another tax year the dividends received deductions under rsc 243 and rsc 245 are computed without regards to the aggregate limitations that normally limit these deductions and the foreign the deduction for foreign derived intangible income is disallowed basically if you have questions about internal revenue code 243 section 243 or section 245 please drop them below we'll certainly answer you we have all the, we have all the answers we have done extensive research about those uh, parts of the code so digging further so basically if you want to calculate net operating loss you have to understand so a net operating loss sometimes called a net loss appears on the company's bottom line or income statement right so be basically before the implementation of the tax cuts and job acts the tcg the tcga in 2018 the IRS used to allow businesses to carry net operating losses forward 20 years to net against future profits and backward two years for an immediate refund of previous taxes paid because the the time value of money shows that tax savings in the present are more valuable than in the future. The carry back method was generally used first, followed by the carry forward method. Okay, so this is what you have to understand. And after carrying losses forward for 40 years, any remaining losses expired and could no, could no longer actually be used to reduce taxable income. The thing here is that, you know, you have a, a situation before the Tax Cut and Jobs Act, so pre-2018, and they have another situation after 2018 so the question to you is which kind of which category do you fall into you have to have a clear answer to that because uh, that, this will actually uh, dictate what kind of uh ex what kind of uh, uh carry carry over or carry back or carry forward do you have to uh, deal with so the calculation this topic can be confusing to some viewers so what i wanted to hear is i want to take an example i want to break it down for you i want to i want to go into the granularity required to explain this topic so that you really understand let me give an example so imagine a company that had an nol of five million dollars one year and a taxable income of six million the next think about that five million six million so the carryover limit of 80% of 6 million is 4.8 million, right? 6 million times 80%. So the full loss from the first year can be carried forward on the balance sheet to the second year as a deferred tax asset. So the loss limited to 80% of income in the second year can then be used in the second year as an expense on the income statement. So basically what, what happens here is that this lowers net income and therefore the taxable income 
for the second year to 1.2 million. In other words, you have uh, 6 million minus 4.8 million. And what will happen here is that a deferred, a 200,000 deferred tax asset will remain on the balance sheet to be carried to the third year, which is really great. So, and the thing here is that you have to understand it depends on what kind of what kind of uh, income state, what kind of operations you have, okay. But there are some uh, annual carry forward limitations. So a net operating loss is a valuable asset because it can, as you can, as you have seen in this example, it can lower a company's future taxable income. For this reason, the IRS restricts using an acquired company simply for its annual tax benefits. So, Section 382 of the Internal Revenue Code specifically states that if a company with an NOL has at least a 50% ownership change, the acquiring company may use only part of the NOL in each concurrent year. However, purchasing a business with a substantial NOL may mean a larger sum of money going to the acquired company's shareholders than if the acquired company possessed a smaller NOL. So this is something you need to understand because uh, an annual can, is a deferred tax asset, which basically basically uh, increases the value of the company. Okay, so what is an annual carry forward? The net operating loss can be generally be used can be used generally to offset a company's tax payments in other tax periods through an IRS tax provision called a loss carry forward. So the, this offers basically a benefit to a company in that it can reduce a company's future tax liability by offsetting taxable income in future years. Okay, so the purpose behind this tax provision is to allow, again, as I said before, to some some form of tax relief when a company loses money in a tax period. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another session of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. We are still having a very interesting conversation about IRS net operating loss deduction rules. Very important. And let me just uh, give you a few updates. It's important that, they, that to, to note that there have been changes to net operating loss rules in the past. And I was speaking to you earlier about a situation before 2018 and after 2018. So we have the TCJA. So in 2017, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. The TCJA made significant changes to the laws regarding net operating losses. A lot of a lot of business owners actually applauded the, the, the law, but some in some quarters people were criticizing the uh, detrimental effects of the law. So the TCJA removed the two-year carryback provision for tax years beginning January 1st, 2018 or later, except for certain farming losses. But the thing is now the law allows for an indefinite carry forward period. However, the carry forwards are also now limited to 80% of each subsequent year's net income because the IRS just want to make sure that the, the, uh, the, the taxpayer, business taxpayers are not abusing the, the rules, are not abusing the NOL uh, provisions. Okay, And uh, so if a business creates NOLs in more than one year, they are to be drawn down completely in the order that they were incurred before drawing down another NOL. So the CARES Act effectively suspended the changes made by the TCJA. I mean, but this is temporary because the, because COVID-19 uh, hopefully now is uh, behind us. But back in 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, you have to understand there was a situation. So the CARES Act had to act to sort of change the TCJ, TCJA rules, of, uh, I would say temporarily. So losses originating in tax years beginning January 1st, 2018 are still subject to the former tax rules. Any remaining losses will expire after 20 years. Okay, so the TCJA actually affected annual carry forwards. Why? Because for tax years 2018 and later, this piece of law removed the previously allowed two-year carryback provision except for certain farming losses, as I've said before. So, but you gotta be, even if you're in farming, if you are in farming, you have to meet certain specific criteria. Okay, so this is really important. So long story short, the laws, it is what it is right now. And uh, depending on your, your state, on your industry, you might actually have to adjust 
based on your sector. You know, you might have to adjust based on your on your operation too. But it's always best, always best to seek the help of a of a tax professional, a CPA, an EA. In this conversation, we gave you general guidance. If you have questions, you can drop them below. We'll answer. But it's always important, always great to seek the help of a, an, an enrolled agent or a CPA or any or a tax attorney who understands the subtleties of uh, your company, the subtleties of your sector, the subtleties of your state to really give you specific advice. Thank you so much for your attention. I was talking to you about IRS net operating loss deduction rules. I gave you an overview. We spoke about the target audience, the calculation. I gave you an example and also talked about updates. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.